I'm taking a pause from collecting Magic the Gathering cards. I'm still going to open packs for fun, which is just a gamble. But collecting as a collector, as somebody who likes getting multiple copies of the same card for no other reason than I can, uh, it is actually very, um, there are two things going on. And uh, I'll bring these out. These are my loop. Very cheap, I buy everything on Amazon. Um, there are a lot of bloody fakes right now. A lot of fakes. In fact, I was gonna make a video, but like, I, I don't know how to make, I might have to buy like a microscope. I have to kind of invest to teach you how to spot a fake. But the amount of fakes that are in the marketplace right now is uh, very high. Uh, I think there's another batch coming from Germany. Again, this is what I've been told. So because I've made the initial batch on fake, I still get emails every single day asking me, is this real, is this fake? And you know, with a very, very good resolution, um, what I look for is, you know, no, how can I say this? The fakes will only get better in time. They're never going to not learn from their mistake, right? So if they make a mistake and the paper, the light test fails, well, next time around, guess what? They're going to do a better job and a better job until eventually it passes. Um, the one test that I have not seen them be, I have been able, I have seen fake cards with the foil, which I didn't think would be possible with the um, little sticker as well. What they do is they just, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? They print it that way and then they get the real stickers and then put it on the uh, fake card from a, like a really bad card, right? So I'm a little concerned. I don't want to like panic you guys. It's not, uh, fakes have existed since the beginning of Magic with rebacks and so on. You know, people used to take a uh, collector's edition and then reback them because, and then try to sell them as they were real. And at that time, there wasn't much knowledge that people were doing. There wasn't like, oh, you can do the light test, you can wait. It was just like, you know, the game wasn't even that valuable. People just did it because they wanted to use their collector's edition and they didn't want to feel embarrassed that the back was different. I, in my opinion, um, a lot of this stuff is going to come down to the only, like, if you don't own a loop today, you shouldn't be buying magic cards over a hundred dollars, unless it's from a very, very well-known, well-trusted, um, person or website. Uh, you need a loop. So what it has come down today for me is you absolutely need a loop. I have a scale. I have the UV, I have everything else, right? And I have my expertise. And I have a category of cards, which I know is real. So let's say I get a unlimited Black Lotus. I have a lot of unlimited cards that are artifacts that are not fakeable because it's so it's such a weird card, right? And it's a card that I pulled when I was a kid. So I can take it, I know it's real because it came from a time that this card was not valuable and I can compare. Um, people say the uh, degree, so the, the one test that I like the most is the the free red dot test, they call it a green dot test. A little deceiving, it's on the green dot in the back of the card, it's on every single card, but it's free, it's actually four little red dots in an L, and that's it. So if you had a bunch of red dots, then you would be in trouble. If you only had three red dots, I've seen that too. It still could be good. Um, it's, these red dots are very hard. If you don't have any red dots, I would be concerned. If you had one or two red dots, I was just like, okay, well, check everything else out first. There's a lot of fakes coming on the market and people don't talk about that. Um, I obviously, this channel blew up because initially because I, we covered counterfeits and they're getting better uh, with, to, with better technology. I mean, it, it really comes down to with better technology. I'm not even talking about the old fakes, like the Black Lotus fakes. I'm talking about the new cards. Um, you have two different issues here. You have the fact that the new cards, the print quality is so low and they print so many of them and there's so many print errors, right? It's really hard to catch fakes nowadays. That's why the uh, green dot test is kind of the only way to go because the back of it, the card should be the same. The front of these cards, you know, sometimes there's too much ink, sometimes there's not enough ink. So when your whole idea of this thing is rosette patterns and inking and stuff like that, well, that's no good if a real card can be super dark or it can be super light. And I have seen cards in Magic where the rosette, uh, and especially for Japanese cards, doesn't look the same. It's like, wait, what is this? And it's a real card from uh, maybe a vent deck or from a Japanese printing. 
Um, my, my main concern, and this is a really, really big concern of mine, is not for the older cards, and this might be sound kind of ridiculous. It's a volume issue, right? It's the volume issue. In fact, um, when back in the day, when they were printing magic cards, they had different technology. Well, if you were gonna counterfeit a card and the today's cards are just as valuable, plus they sell easier because people have more demand, why wouldn't you counterfeit a card using the same technology? What I'm suggesting is cards printed today use today's technology. If you really wanted to make money counterfeiting cards, you would print cards today. But you wouldn't print the commons, uncommons, rare, you just pick, pick the, uh, the, the best version of the card you can get. I actually looked at a very, very convincing um, Liliana, what was it? Liliana, Japanese, I, I've been looking forever for this card. A Japanese Liliana from War of the Sparks, um, the Dread Horde, man, whatever. It's the uh, with the Japanese artwork, and it was fake. Very convincing though, but it was fake. So that's what I, I would not be super worried. Now again, if you're buying a Black Lotus, yes, you should check if it's fake, right? I'm not saying don't check it, because the value of these cards are just so insane that if you buy a fake, it could ruin your life. It could really make a, a devastating impact on your collection and on your life. I mean, you buy Black Lotus for 13,000 unlimited, it's fake. You're out $13,000. Can you afford to take that type of hit? Most people know. And if after you take that type of hit, are you really gonna be that excited to collect magic anymore? No. Uh, same with moxes and duels and you know, like you, you have to um, understand something about uh, this game. There are a lot of cheaters. There are a lot of scammers. There's a lot of people uh, trying to, I had this uh, Fire Emblem douchebag, uh, which I posted on my Facebook and I asked for free cards to see if I could buy them, right? Or trade for them. And so he posted a picture of free cards. That picture was owed and he no longer has the most valuable of the free cards. And he wants for the remaining two cards, they're on eBay for less than 500. One's at 400, the other ones are 400. He wants $750 for those two, but he's using an old picture where he doesn't even have the card. The most valuable card, right? So it's like, First of this in Charizard, first of this in Blastoise, first of this in Venusaur. I want the set. So he posts me a picture of the set. And then later on, he tells me, oh, I don't have the first of this in Charizard. Then why would you post a picture trying to sell me the first of this in Charizard? The amount of people in the card games, and you know, I, I will expose him as his name. I've been actually putting on Discord and so on. The amount of people, and then you see this on the Discord and the Fire Emblem Discord, you ask, hey, okay, you're gonna sell me this? Can I see a picture of it? Nope, they don't own it. The amount of people who take other people's pictures and try to pretend that it's their card is just tremendous. It is just sickening, um, the amount of scammers there are. And if you don't buy from me, I mean, one thing I like about eBay, the eBay always side with the, the buyer, always sides with the buyer, for good or bad. So if you're the buyer, use eBay because whatever happens, they're gonna side with you. But if you use um, PayPal goods and services, which is what I would have used in this case, they're gonna F you over. I um, I actually will make a video about this scammer dude and uh, I'll use his real name and everything uh, because I think this is an important lesson to learn when you're buying cards. So not only do you have to deal with fake cards, you have to deal with scammers selling fake cards or selling cards that they don't even own like they literally do not own their cards in the picture they're trying to use to sell it to you for. It's wild, right? It's wild. Anyway, hi guys.